I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system and I will be showing you my optimized settings as well. A quick disclaimer before I start. Ray tracing, HDR and frame generation currently do not work on PC. That's why I didn't include ray tracing in this video. Let's start by taking a look at the CPU performance. With a mid-range CPU from 2019, using CPU intensive settings, the R5 3600X appears to cap at around 60% utilization, leaving the GPU being clearly underutilized. This would be acceptable, but it's not even reaching high frame rates. With an average of around 60 FPS, and lots of dips down to the 40s. Considering the nature of this game, CPU performance should ideally be really high, since not much is going on that hammers CPU performance. This might be another case of CPU underutilization, which is a common issue with Sony PlayStation ports on specific CPUs. What's even more confusing is that the CPU load is balanced across all threads with even utilization except for one thread that has higher utilization, which is normal behavior. This just doesn't make any sense. Either it's a CPU underutilization issue, which after seeing the thread load, I doubt. So, it may just end up being that the game is just not well optimized, CPU-wise. Now, let's get into the settings, starting with view distance. I tested each option thoroughly, and I found that near and medium had very obvious popping. While high made a noticeable improvement, popping was still noticeable. Only when using ultra did it finally stop being noticeable, and there is a very small performance cost with each option. So I recommend ultra here. Anti-aliasing looks best with TAA. No mystery here. As for anti-aliasing quality, it looks and performs the same across all options. Just keep it on Ultra. Post-processing adjusts the quality of ambient occlusion, bloom, and depth of field. In this scene, high and ultra enable some nice looking bloom and light rays. In this next scene, we can see how it affects ambient occlusion, with each option gradually increasing the effect's strength. Performance-wise, it depends on the scene. Outdoors, it seems to have a small impact, while indoors, anything above low performs around 10% slower. Given how important this setting is, it's worth it. I recommend Ultra. The Shadows setting is broken on low and medium, as it disables very important effects such as lighting and volumetrics. I think this is not intended and is a bug. Anyway, using high and above fixes this issue. As for the shadow quality, on low and medium, they look very shimmery. On high, it looks a lot more stable, and ultra further improves upon high, with better shadow quality and detail in the distance. For performance, it varies depending on the scene. Each option has a noticeable FPS impact, while high has the most impact on frame rates. In this scene, going from high to ultra had a 15% impact, and in this scene, it had a 33% impact. So, use high for the best balance. The textures setting controls texture resolution and anisotropic filtering. In this scene, textures look the same on medium and above, 
and each option has a very small increase in VRAM usage. The effect setting controls a few things, most notably the snow effects. It gives them that believable and soft diffused look that real snow has. Medium and high look a bit soft, while ultra looks just right and increases the finishing. It also controls how light interacts and blends with objects. On low and medium, it can also break some objects, either rendering them inaccurately or completely ignores rendering them. Just look at the carpet, the character's clothes, and the pillow and blanket on the sofa. Indoor performance seems negligible, while outdoor performance can drop when using medium and above. This is a very important setting and is worth it. Use Ultra. The foliage setting introduces animated foliage and increases their quantity with each option. It also increases the quality of tree branches as well. Medium, High and Ultra perform about the same, so I recommend Ultra for this option. The volumetric lighting and fog gradually improves their quality with each option, but the difference can be hard to notice, and each option comes with a noticeable performance impact. I recommend Medium for the best balance. Reflections on low are disabled, while medium and above enable them, and they all look the same with very basic, ugly reflections. It's honestly a shame that reflections didn't get any noticeable improvements with the remake, although there are ray traced reflections in the settings menu, but as I said before, they are broken and don't work. Maybe I'll revisit them in the future if they get fixed. For now, just use Ultra Reflections. The shading quality setting also controls snow, with low missing that snow shader effect. Medium and high enable that effect, but the quality is atrocious and the snow looks quite soft. They also introduce shimmering on the edges of the character, while Ultra completely fixes those issues and looks miles better. It also controls material quality and hair quality. Medium and high look quite soft, and Ultra looks to be the most viable option. As for performance, it depends on the location. Sometimes the performance difference is very small, while in other locations it can be very noticeable. But this is a must-have setting, so keep this on Ultra. The motion blur setting can be disabled and has three quality options that gradually increase motion blur. The performance impact is unnoticeable, so choose whatever you prefer. Turning Bloom on has a subtle impact. Focus on the mini fridge to see it clearly. Its performance cost is small, so keep this setting on. Virtual shadow maps can sometimes completely change the look of the scene, especially on dynamically lit environments and sometimes it can have a minimal impact to the image quality. It affects every aspect of shadows. It is an Unreal Engine feature after all, which uses a new shadow mapping method to deliver consistent high resolution shadowing. Performance wise however, it tanks frame rates. I saw a max of 30% FPS drop with it turned on. It can also interfere with frame times, making them more jittery. But you will have to check this on your own system to be sure. 
I recommend disabling this setting for the best performance. With the upscale method turned off, the image looks a bit shimmery. DLSS removes the shimmering. FSR3 has noticeable aliasing. Temporal super resolution, surprisingly, looks the sharpest. But it looks even worse than FSR3 with the shimmering. Now for another scene to test the particles. Native and DLSS look almost indistinguishable, while FSR3 looks to have a hard time dealing with the snow particles. It also suffers from noticeable ghosting. TSR looks just like FSR3, but with less exaggerated issues. For performance, it looks like TSR achieves much lower frame rates at the same internal resolution than DLSS and FSR. Overall, DLSS is the clear winner here. At native 1440p with max settings, keep in mind ray tracing is turned off as it doesn't work yet. The frame rates were a slideshow, averaging 20 FPS. Using the optimized settings while still at native, the average FPS increased to 34 FPS, and using DLSS quality further increased the average FPS to 46. This game is really demanding and not so well optimized at the same time with lots of settings just plain broken. I recommend you target a low but stable frame rate to enjoy the game.